early 5 40 in the morning everyone's asleep streets are quiet i'm sneaking in a quick run probably like 30 or 40 minutes super easy nothing nothing too big just building up the habit back let's go on a run together and then i'll walk you through my program Okay, chicken, feeling good. Of course, it's on too. Nothing serious. You can still see the moon. Right there. in just a little over 30 minutes nothing too big just getting out there putting in the consistency as mentioned thought of doing the long run but then again it's Sunday I want to spend the day with the family so cut it short we'll see we'll see feeling good feeling strong I will go change go eat and then I'll walk you through what I'm actually doing here change of plans instead of uh, Sunday morning breakfast, we're on the playground. Yay, Gabby! <laughs> and now we're on a hunt for some family guilty pleasures. Do you want to be in the vlog? <laughs> <laughs> Guilty pleasures for us means pastry and coffee. This was really weird. Um, the place we usually get coffee from, they have like a, the milk from the farmers or something like this. And uh, after they made the coffee, I drank the first sip and it tasted so weird. Then Christina took a sip. She was like, no, 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 this is not good. But then the other guy tasted the milk like, no, 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 this is bad. They opened another one that was also bad. And we were like first customers. It was 9, 10 or 9, 15 that we were there. They opened at 9, so we, we probably saved a lot of uh, angry customers for them. But now each sip tastes weird because of the, because of the memory. Yeah. Things are escalating, now we're shopping for shoes. After a long morning I'm back in my apartment, now it's quiet. Um, everyone again is taking a nap so I have some time to record this kind of uh, 
introduction, I guess, or something like this. Earlier this week in my Insta stories, I shared that I'm planning to do a, I'm planning to training for a marathon. The reason for that was that um, I wanted to introduce some form of uh, structure to my training. Right now it's more kind of for fun, just to stay healthy. I miss this uh, excitement, I miss this build up towards something bigger. So that is something that I really want to uh, want to do. And I thought, um, why should I why should I do it alone this time? So I asked if anyone would be interested in in my approach, how I would do it, uh, what's my progress, and uh, actually a lot of a lot of you have res responded in Instagram that yeah, we would want to see it and um, kind of please do. The idea I had for this was kind of to do it in a more engaging way, not in a sense that, oh, this is me training, this is my progress. So this time maybe I do it in a more visual way, take you with me on some of my trainings, um, explain to you why I do certain things, how it is progressing, in a more personal way you can resonate with what is happening with, with me, with my progress, and take some of those activities or things that I'm doing and then implement it for your particular preparation. This idea to have like a virtual training partner which we can do together with you and um, yeah we'll see where it goes. Before I go into actual training that I did this week I want to bring some theory into it to create some sort of a story behind and um, share with you a rough plan or rather logic that we'll be following throughout, uh, throughout this time uh, and maybe bring some focus points so that we kind of we know what we what we're working on in the, uh, throughout all of this time and if we take in mid of october which is 11th to 10th no 9th 10th of october as a um, as the as the race day be it virtual or self supported or some specific marathon then it gives us 20 uh, 20 weeks of preparation which is really good i just wanted to share one idea and that's the kind of how do you prepare for a race for instance if we consider this as your as the time the horizontal axis and the vertical axis is the intensity um, i found that many people want to jump straight into doing some intervals i need the speed work i need to do some strength training or I need to do tempo runs and I need to do hard in the hard intervals. Um, the problem with that is um, if we go straight away into intensity, we risk of burning ourselves up pretty quickly because the foundation we are building that on is rather is not so big. And if we consider training and fitness in general as a, like a triangle or a pyramid rather. Uh, the bigger your foundation, the higher you can build the pyramid. And um, the high intensity training is actually the thing that comes at the, at the very top. That's uh, kind of something to push yourself to the next level, to peak. But if we do it straight away with this little foundation, then our pyramid will be very small. But if we build a solid foundation in the beginning, then our pyramid can grow even higher. So the overall uh, our overall fitness, our overall condition will be much better for the time when we will actually will be peaking. The, how I like to do it I, is I essentially I split it into phases. So we have the foundation phase where the intensity is rather small, but uh, we do a lot of volume. Then we reduce the volume a little bit or keep it constant rather. We keep the volume constant. And then we start bumping up the, the intensity. At this point of time, the foundation, the, the base that we have is pretty, pretty solid. So our bodies can tolerate the, uh, the additional intensity. So this is more of a marathon pace uh, that, we're, uh, that we're doing. And then towards, the, towards the, the peaking phase, actually, it was a good idea to add additional phase that's uh, that's the peaking phase or so just before and right after the peak that's where we um, focus on simulating race environment so that's when we're doing the, uh, the longest runs the fueling or practicing basically for marathon and then the intensity reduces and and uh, we we prepare for for the marathon 
So this is where I am now, the, the adaptation phase, as I call it. It's uh, first two weeks where essentially you uh, reteach your body how it is to exercise in a more frequent way. So typically that's where I focus not on what I do during the exercises, but rather on making sure I hit, kind of, I show up. And um, it might be like 20 minutes of exercise, it might be 40 minutes, an hour, it doesn't matter. For me, the most important part at this point of time is to build a habit of consistent exercise. So this week I did, uh, on Tuesday it was an easy run, 30 minutes in the morning. Uh, Wednesday was pretty packed day for me, so I, uh, I went for an indoor bike. I have a bike trainer with Zwift set up just around the corner here and I'm, then Wednesday again was the easy run. Thursday was a strength session. I was totally uh, totally booked for the day, uh, but I woke up in the morning to to um, go out and do some maybe 20 or 30 minutes of uh, strength exercises. Yeah, then yesterday was another bike. Uh, I did some 30 second pickups, nothing, uh, nothing too intense. And, and then today was the... Um, an easy run. That, that's the one that I took you with me. It was uh, just six kilometers, nothing big as said. It's 30 minutes. I originally planned to go for a longer one, but then it's Sunday, so I cut it short a bit. Uh, and then on my way back, I stopped to do some short strides, like 20 to 30 um 20 to 30 steps just to increase the cadence and increase the speed activate those uh glutes and uh, and hamstrings that's where i am let me know if you like the video let me know if you um enjoy this kind of uh, interaction hopefully this will be a, a weekly vlog honestly this week has been a big learning curve for me how to prepare the equipment what me um kind of what to film this is something new that I'm doing, but uh, I'm really excited. I wanted to uh, start some sort of a video blogging or vlogging uh, for a longer while. Do subscribe and um, see you next week. Thanks, bye.